good evening and thank you for joining us on Y254 News Updates. And tonight we talk about men who are taking lead in making sure that the voices of the girls are heard. We also try to talk about what, how do we create a balance between making sure that we empower the girls and not forget the boys. Uh, and also passing a message and motivating men to also come up and that is fight for girls right and also fight for the boys right because you don't want to be at a position whereby one group is, uh, is fe uh, feels left out and to help us tackle this topic tonight we have Gideon Makumi who is the vice president of the Youth Mentorship Foundation and also the chairman of Future Now Mentorship we also have Tom Isaac, who is the coordinator of welfare for uh, children and youth uh, in Kenya. And these people are going to help us understand. These are men who are taking lead in making sure that both the boys and the girls' uh, voices are heard in terms of making sure that they're fighting for the rights of these children, making sure that every person is heard based on whatever challenge that every child or every young person in this country is going through. But you can be part of this conversation tonight by sharing your views on our social media platforms. That is on Y254 channel. Hashtag Y254 News. You can also talk to me at Patricia Murioki1 on Twitter. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you guys for coming today. Welcome to Y254. Thank you. And we've seen a lot of achievements so far uh, on the girl child. We've seen now the girls can assess education. We've seen a lot of changes as far as FGM is concerned. We've seen changes in terms of uh, early marriages and all that. But there's always a fight that we for, we've pushed the girls very much and forgotten the boys. And tonight I'd like us to really talk about this and try to see how do we now make sure that people don't left out. But before we start, I'd like to start with you, uh, Tom. Would you kindly tell us why did you choose to be part, to serve under the, to be the coordinator of the welfare of the children and the youth in Kenya? Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, mine will just be simple. Uh, first of all, uh, just the word welfare. Welfare simply means uh, better men for all. Mm -hmm. And why the gas program? We realized that some time back we did a research in 2009 and realized that uh, as early as from age nine, most girls were dropping out of school, mm -hmm. were not, not being involved in other uh, communal activities. The fact being is uh, most of them were undergoing through the teenage and uh, adolescent crisis and uh, the puberty changes. So they could not understand themselves why are they different from the boys. Mm -hmm. Now this make more girls to withdraw mm -hmm. uh, from the society, from the community, even for the, from the curriculum activities. And we felt, why don't we start a, an association or an organization where we can try to bring girls on board for them to feel that uh, they are equal to boys. Mm -hmm. And that was the inception uh, where we started a program by the name uh, Girls Reach Out. Mm -hmm. We started by around six girls mm -hmm. where we, 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 we gathered in a certain village uh, within Nairobi that's in Kamukuncha, a place called Kiambio. Mm -hmm. And uh, we got a response from not only the seven girls we targeted, mm -hmm. but we got an overwhelming number of more than 900 girls. Okay. So we realized that the challenges girls are facing, one, is inadequate of uh, appropriate and relevant uh, information, especially on reproductive health. Mm -hmm. Number two, they like that they lacked that platform uh, to express themselves mm -hmm. and number three they felt like uh, they are discriminated mm -hmm. from uh, other uh, activities where boys were being involved okay. and we thought uh, if we start that mm -hmm. we can be able to give a girl child a voice and uh, be at par mm -hmm. uh, with the boy child okay yeah. uh, as for you Gideon I also understand that you that you're a human resource with better network which is an organization that um, prioritizes on making sure that girls uh, can assess uh, sanitary towers. Why did you choose to do that? Because we would, honestly speaking, would say like, uh, you're a man, you don't have to go through the menstruation period. So why choose to take that path? Thank you, Patricia. Uh, when you look at uh, the girl child, there are so many challenges that they go through. And one of the major challenges that girls face is the issue of the parts mm -hmm. and uh, menstruation for a long time has kept girls out of school okay. where you find on average in a month a girl would miss three to four days out of school because they don't they cannot afford sanitary towels mm -hmm. so what we are doing at Bethel Network uh, it's ensuring that every girl stays in school in fact the program is called always keeping girls in school mm -hmm. and we're ensuring that this girl gets a chance when even the others the boys are in school 
and those who can afford her in school, she can as well get that chance. Okay. So why I chose to be part of that, it is because these girls, they very we target the very vulnerable mm -hmm. and those in the very needy places. It's because these are our sisters. These are people that if given a chance to remain in school, mm -hmm. they stand a chance to succeed in future because mm -hmm. their future education. We say education is not everything, but it is something. Mm -hmm. And these girls need that education for them to have brighter futures. Yeah, okay. So that's why, as a youth mentor, I choose to join that path mm -hmm. of empowering the girls. Okay. Yeah. So most of the times when you're talking about problems that are faced by both the boys and the girls, we, we have, I feel like we have uh, a, great, a, a good definition on what the girls go through. Lack of sanitary towers, early marriages, FGM, and, and what have you. What are the what are the challenges that the boys now go through? Because we we're trying to create a platform whereby we are we are creating an, a, a, a space which is very inclusive, that a boy a boy will come and feel the same help or the same impact that a girl has come and felt. So, Tom, what do you think are some of the challenges that boys in this country go through that people have assumed? Uh, that, that's very key. One is an assumption that uh, a boy child does not face any difficulty. That's mm -hmm. a very big assumption. Th that's challenge number one. Mm -hmm. A misconception in the community mm -hmm. that a boy child uh, does not undergo all these challenges. So misconception is a uh, challenge number one. Mm -hmm. Challenge number two, where boys are told that uh, you should not bring out your real feelings, I mean emotions. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you wonder, ukijikaza kisabuni and you are passing through tough time, mm -hmm. it, it's a challenge. Number three mm -hmm. is lack of uh, proper mentorship. Mm -hmm. When I talk about proper mentorship, I'll give an example of the, the girl child program. Mm -hmm. You find you take girls, take them through a mentor who is able to walk with them mm -hmm. through that uh, teenage uh, period. Mm -hmm. But the boys, you realize that uh, they lack somebody that will take them through that teenage adolescent stage mm -hmm. that can walk with them all through. Mm -hmm. And that's why you realize most of our boys, as they get to 19 or 20, mm -hmm. most of them, they are not mature emotionally. Mm -hmm. They are thinking, they are, their decision making skills is not that uh, stable in a way that he's not even able to make decisions for himself. Mm -hmm. So they also lack uh, role models. Mm -hmm. in their lives they are also lacking appropriate information mm -hmm. and the right choices that can guide them to the right path and the right career okay yeah so Gideon you've heard what Thomas talked about the misconceptions that are there in the society we expect uh, we are, we are building men, we are, we are telling you, you have to be strong. You cannot speak about the pain. You cannot show, uh, you cannot cry. We, we, maybe sometimes when you have to, when you go through something difficult, we are trying to show men that if you go through depression, you have to find a way to deal with it. As a man, you're not supposed to be at that state. When you look at the girl child, their problem, for example, with a girl in Kibera or a girl in a school somewhere who does not have sanitary towers, what I need to do is buy a packet and give it to them. So now how do we come and talk to these boys now whose problem most of the times maybe is emotional, which most of the time is not something that is physical that we are going to see. How do we deal with such issues that are affecting the boy child? Uh, first, uh, these young men, like he has said, mm -hmm. they like that guidance. Mm -hmm. They like someone who tells them that it is okay mm -hmm. to be emotional even mm -hmm. as a boy. Mm -hmm. I think first and foremost, as we are having these conversations with the girls, it's also very crucial that we don't sideline the boys because they also need, if it's life skills for example, these boys need those life skills. Mm -hmm. They need to know how to maneuver in life. Mm -hmm. So how we can address these issues is by having someone who can go and talk to them. Mm -hmm. An elder brother who will show them mm -hmm. that, yes, you are going through these challenges, you're experiencing these issues, it's okay to talk about them. Okay. Because traditionally, men have grown knowing that you're supposed to be strong. Mm -hmm. But we are human beings when all is said and done. Yeah. You need someone to talk to, mm -hmm. and you even need to know how to talk about those issues that you're going through. Mm -hmm. So basically, it's creating that platform mm -hmm. where you are having a conversation with the boys and letting them know you can talk about it. Mm -hmm. Because if we empower these girls so much, who will marry them? 
who will marry them. Mm -hmm. They yeah, need a husband. Mm -hmm. And the husbands are even these boys that sometimes we are sidelined. Mm -hmm. So it's very, very necessary to even, even these conversations of sanitary towels, mm -hmm. this empowerment, how to use a pad, mm -hmm. I find it very necessary for even the boys to be there. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes you do a lot in empowering the girls and in showing the girls how they should be empowered with the life skills. Mm -hmm. But when you're done, the boys who are somewhere playing in the field, yeah. when you're done with those conversations, the boys are the same ones who come and water down everything that you've told the, mm -hmm. the girls. Mm -hmm. So it is very important to have these conversations with the boys and the girls together, mm -hmm. an integrated sort of mentorship and empowerment, okay. even when issues like menstruation are concerned. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so with you Tom, as the coordinator for welfare for the children and the youth in this country, what are some of the projects that you that you run that targets the girl and that targets the boy to try and make sure that these people can assess everything uh, just at the same level because when you talk about gender equality we don't want to put the girl up here and forget the girl at the boy at the bottom thank you as an organization uh, we, we we benchmark on advocacy as a key uh, a key a, a key a tool in disseminating information uh -huh. and we realize that uh, any child play is very key. Mm -hmm. So we came up with uh, with sports, and not only sports, a sport that is very specific that does not need a lot of space. Mm -hmm. So we use basketball as one of the uh, the advocacy tool mm -hmm. uh, to ensure that we are able to incorporate in boys and girls. Mm -hmm. And uh, most of the mentors we work with, mm -hmm. they run uh, clinics in schools. Mm -hmm. uh, like now, as we are talking about out of school, we have like 11 weeks all the way to, uh, to as they can go back to school. Mm -hmm. So they initiate what you call the basketball clinics. Mm -hmm. Where in the basketball clinics, we have a session where we have young boys and young girls training differently. Then we have session where they're able to play all together mm -hmm. then uh, in between the sessions we have the talks mm -hmm. now some of the talks we ensure that uh, we're able to understand what are the key things that are coming out okay. and that's why uh, you'll realize that some of the key things that the, the, the current trends of events are happening mm -hmm. somebody like me that's when i get to know some of the unique songs that are coming up mm -hmm. you wonder now <laughs> i didn't know something like uh, it's called pegasus or something like that <laughs> Pegejeng, that one okay yeah, i uh -huh. heard it when they were discussing mm -hmm. the, within the talks mm -hmm. so it means they are aware now we tell him what about that they mm -hmm. tell you whatever is happening uh -huh. so we use sports especially basketball as one of the tool mm -hmm. number two we formed what you call the csc csc mm -hmm. are children advisory committees okay. now this children advisory committee we identify we give it an even number a uh, team of 15 where we have either boys seven girls eight or girls seven boys mm -hmm. eight mm -hmm. we call them csc where now we set what you call the grassroots groups now, these grassroots groups are supposed to be those small clubs where now they are mentors to each other, mm -hmm. where they are able to identify the key issues. Mm -hmm. Now, through the coach, they can reach to a coordinator over that given uh, uh, grassroots group. Okay. We also use uh, um, acrobats mm -hmm. as one of uh, one unique way of uh, reaching out, mm -hmm. especially you realize most girls prefer using acrobats because mm -hmm. acrobats was reserved for boys. So we use uh, acrobats as a, 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 an upcoming uh, skill okay. that young yeah, girls can be able to express themselves. Mm -hmm. Then lastly, we also run a program, we call it AGEP. Mm -hmm. AGEP is all about adolescent girls empowerment program. Mm -hmm. Where now this AGEP, we train uh, uh, the, 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 the mature teenagers okay. to become mentors to the rest. And we task one mentor to identify 20 girls mm -hmm. that she can be able to work with. Oh, wow, now these 20 nice. girls, we task her now to identify two close boys mm -hmm. that she can be able to impact their life. Oh. Just to build on what you're saying, mm -hmm. you realize that uh, most of the teenage pregnancies that are happening or child pregnancies that are happening, they are not caused by uh, mostly others from outside. Yeah. They are just peer the within, group, yeah, within their within circles. Themselves. So if this girl is able to talk to his uh, peers and tell them no, we've been told about wise decision making. So this is the best and this is the, oh, the wrong. Yeah. Okay. They are able to make a rational decision mm -hmm. simply because now they are peers mm -hmm. together. Okay. Then uh, we also do the health debate, the mm -hmm. health debates, mm -hmm. uh, the FGDs. We, we normally hold like kind of like a one hour just discussion on a specific topic okay. brought by the the, 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 the the young ones within their own environment. Okay. Yeah. We're going to be taking a very short break, but don't go far away. We're going to be back with more on Y254 News updates. Y254. Imagine. Y254. Imagine. 
Thank you for staying with us on Y254 News Updates. And tonight, we're talking about the girl child. We're talking about the boy child. We're just having a conversation on how do we create a balance in making sure that we don't neglect one group as we push the other to achieve a greatness. So far, we've talked about the causes. We've talked about challenges that both the boys and the girls uh, have to go through. We've heard what Tom does. Uh, through his organization and now I want us uh, Gideon to tell us about what they do with uh, Youth Mentorship Foundation and also with the Future Now uh, Foundation as we also try to see what can the boys and the girls who are on holiday right now what activities can they engage themselves in to make sure that uh, come January we don't have people who cannot report back to school and all that so Gideon uh, what do you do with uh, Future Now Mentorship? Uh, Future Now Mentorship is uh, an organization that we recently founded mm -hmm. with a group of young people, Patricia being one of them. Yes. <laughs> and uh, in this organization, what we're doing, we believe that the future of the young people mm -hmm. has to be realized now. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't prepare for your future today, mm -hmm. then you can as well forget about it because what you do today is what will determine whom you become tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So what we are doing is going to schools, talking to the young men and women, those boys and girls, mm -hmm. and telling them that your future is your responsibility. Mm -hmm. Your future, you have to work on it now because one of the things that we tend to believe, and we were there some time back, mm -hmm. you think you have all the time. Yeah while you're in school. Mm -hmm. But reality is, you wouldn't realize uh, by the time you're finishing, maybe from 4 or class 8, you wouldn't be realizing that time is really spent. Yeah. So what we are doing in the future now is telling the young people that work on your future today because you can make it. Mm -hmm. We've been there, we've gone through some things that uh, we think if you avoided, you, you stand a better chance mm -hmm. to uh, excel or rather succeed faster. Mm -hmm. And what we're doing at Youth Mentorship Foundation, basically our vision is to nurture transformational leaders mm -hmm. through mentorship. Mm -hmm. We believe that as a young person, you are a leader. Whether you have a position, whether you have a title, there's something that you can do back in your community. Mm -hmm. All of us are a product in, of a certain community. Yes. We were molded somewhere. Mm -hmm. So our aim as Youth Mentorship Foundation is to challenge this young person, go back and do something. Mm -hmm. Go and hold someone's hand, walk with them, whether it's never about the money, it's never about uh, who you are. As a person, as Gideon, as Patricia, you can do something in your community yeah. because you are a leader. Mm -hmm. So we train young people mm -hmm. to be leaders mm -hmm. who will make a difference in their communities. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Tom, we have people who run Girl Child Initiatives and they're very passionate about it. But I want to, I would like you to speak to someone today who runs a program, who runs a uh, an organization that focuses on the girls and they are passionate about it but how do they now manage to create a balance to make sure that their passion does not disadvantage someone else who is a boy child yeah. true uh, we need to understand that uh, this is not just a one day's activity or an event mm -hmm. it's a long term process mm -hmm. where we have to start from somewhere mm -hmm. and uh, head somewhere mm -hmm. and it's good that uh, we are able to determine that where are we at the moment mm -hmm. where do you want to get uh, within the next 10 or 5 years to come yes. that will really give us a clear picture on uh, uh, some of the key uh, challenges that uh, probably the girl may be facing mm -hmm. and when we overcome them probably the boy might be facing the same mm -hmm. a good example just benchmarking on our recent uh, statistics talking about the census we mm -hmm. are being told that uh, the, the, the disparity between um, male and female mm -hmm. is slightly not more than a percentage yeah. so what does that tell us mm -hmm. we used to be told girls are so many but now it is becoming now we are almost overtaking. The, we as men, we are almost overtaking mm -hmm. uh, that uh, perception that uh, girls are so many. Mm -hmm. So it, it's all about the, the, the program we need to initiate. Anything, activity that might be running, mm -hmm. let's put into consideration. Uh, or under whose benefit is it? Mm -hmm. Does it only benefit the girls? Mm -hmm. Or it's benefiting both girls and boys? Mm -hmm. Two, uh, the, 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 the end results. Uh, of, of how much impact will it have to the community in terms of the community can be able to realize ah, 
we were able to run this particular program mm -hmm. and it was able to bring all on board mm -hmm. because some of the challenges we face as uh, the champions or girls is we are told we are always fighting for girl leaving the, the boy child in the mm -hmm. bush mm -hmm. so when the boy, boy child come from the bush now is the one that messes the way uh, my colleague was saying that you water down your know, efforts mm -hmm. so consider uh, put in mind uh, what be the the spillover effects mm -hmm. of whatever that we initiate okay. to both boys mm -hmm. and girls okay. and can both of them be able to embrace it because mm -hmm. you can initiate something and you find only girls are willing to embrace it mm -hmm. boys are saying ah you're near my dame yeah. yeah they're not feeling to be part and parcel so it's all about ownership mm -hmm. let all own it and it will be totally a success okay oh, yeah. that is very good so i would like us to talk about uh the role now that the society has to play because in bringing up every child you find out that there's a certain percentage which i think is even the the bigger percent in you becoming the person that you had today is based on the rules that were there everything that the society the role that the society, the society played so didn't bring you into this how now can the society participate in making sure that we create a balance making sure that the society does not come and tell us uh, the boy is supposed to be like this the girl is supposed to be like this and we now start having um contradictions now who do i empower who do i motivate who do i mentor and all that thank you patricia i think uh, what the society needs to do first and foremost is to understand the stereotypes that have been existing mm -hmm. um, the way a society was looking at a girl uh, we call them the gender roles. Mm -hmm. What are those things that were thought to be belong to a boy mm -hmm. and belong to a girl? Mm -hmm. How was a boy treated back then and how was a girl treated? Because I think that is where it all begins. Mm -hmm. When we are looking at gender, uh, we see that there is a particular way each of the sexes were supposed to be handled mm -hmm. but some of these things i think they are passed by time mm -hmm. and as in the 21st century it is time we look at what is really important as far as empowering this child is concerned mm -hmm. because as we speak there is a lot of negative exposure mm -hmm. and this exposure is coming to our sons and our daughters the question is what do you need to do as an adult? Mm -hmm. Do you feel that it is your responsibility to ensure that you are raising a seed that you can be proud of 10 years to come? Mm -hmm. Because some of the things, some of the actions that we are doing, some of the things that we tell these children, some of the things that we tell the boys and the girls, they demotivate them. Mm -hmm. And during their formative stages, it's really, really important to even watch out what you're saying to them. Yeah. Watch out what you're exposing them to. Mm -hmm. So as a society, and society is you and I, there's somewhere we are. Let us ensure that we want them to have a brighter future, mm -hmm. and we are the ones, we are part and parcel of that. Okay. Because today, our um, as parents, I'm a parent, we are too busy out there looking for money, sometimes even thinking that we are looking for their money. We, we want to give them a better life, mm -hmm. and we are absent in their lives. Mm -hmm. But in essence, we are killing them mm -hmm. because they don't have someone they can share their worries with. Mm -hmm. They don't have someone they can go and talk to and tell them, this is what I feel. Mm -hmm. So who is training them? They are learning from their peers. Yeah. They are learning from the TV. Mm -hmm. They are learning from what they are seeing mm -hmm. in the social media. Mm -hmm. But that is not the correct place for them, the correct source for their learning. We should be the ones, we who are adults. Mm -hmm. That's when mentorship is very critical mm -hmm. and very, very necessary. Okay. Uh, as we come to the end of this discussion tonight, I want to bring you Tom in. Uh, to parents watching us tonight, to young people watching us tonight, you know that uh, students are now on a break of two months. They have November, they have December before the, the, the school opens again. What activities can parents enroll their children in to make sure that they don't get lost or they do not involve themselves in drugs, in stealing and all that? Yeah, uh, I'll say as parents, very key. Mm -hmm. Let's go back to basics. Mm -hmm. Why the basics? Mm -hmm. The position of a parent still remains the position of a parent. Because mm -hmm. we've left children to become parents by mm -hmm. themselves. Mm -hmm. Where they are, they are able now to decide which is right and which is wrong. Mm -hmm. So as parents, number one, we need to go back to our basics, mm -hmm. understand what is our role. Mm -hmm. is to guide, mm -hmm. to direct, 
to provide mm -hmm. and to ensure that uh, uh, we role model to our children. Mm -hmm. And I know uh, over the holidays, mm -hmm. so much is happening, mm -hmm. uh, especially peer pressure. Mm -hmm. You'll talk about uh, drugs. You'll talk about um, just uh, engaging in uh, in illegitimate activities. Mm -hmm. So maybe I may, I may propose to most of the the teenagers out there and the young people that uh, let's engage in meaningful activities. Why meaningful activities? Mm -hmm. Something that you can be proud of, mm -hmm. even sharing with your your, your peers, even mm -hmm. telling your parent that I'm going for this particular activity. Mm -hmm. For instance, uh, I came to realize that there's that there are even community libraries within our our communities, yeah. community libraries, mm -hmm. and very few can be able to access those libraries. Those mm -hmm. libraries, you get novels, you, ne you get magazines, mm -hmm. you get even uh, the, the, the good tutorials, uh, uh, materials, mm -hmm. you even get books that can guide you. Mm -hmm. So let's engage in meaningful uh, use of leisure time. Mm -hmm. Let's talk of sports, mm -hmm. uh, not only uh, football, I mean basketball, even football mm -hmm. uh, is very, very essential. Mm -hmm. Let's talk of uh, music and dance. Okay. Young guys, uh, teenagers like music like nothing else. Mm -hmm. And which, which are these songs they're dancing? I, I feel so much uh, disturbed when I see our young girls. When the music is ongoing, they want to dance that kind of a funny dance. Mm -hmm. We can train them that even getting into meaningful dance can make good of their energy. Mm -hmm. So talk of the music and dance. Let's talk of how best we can harness our talents. Mm -hmm. We've seen clips doing rounds where young people are even able to to to, to imitate like uh, their presenters. Okay. Yeah. So let's engage in meaningful activities that mm -hmm. can bring productive results to our people. And come uh, New Year, mm -hmm. we have uh, well engaged young people okay. and children. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Gideon, thirty seconds. What can parents do? What can parents? What activities can parents involve their children in? I've seen now we have churches. Mm -hmm. We have mosques that mm -hmm. have organized retreats for young men and women, uh -huh. for the, these children. Uh -huh. Make it upon yourself to just pay for them. Uh -huh. Just get them, some of these places we went to them when uh -huh. we were young. Uh -huh. And the lessons we got, uh -huh. they are lessons that we could probably not get from our parents, we could uh -huh. not probably get from anywhere. Okay. So if you get a chance, if you see one of those and you think it's something that will add value, uh -huh. Let your ja young man go there, let okay. your young girl go there, mm -hmm. because there's a lot of lessons. And most important, mm -hmm. when they're not there, be present in their lives. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much uh, for joining us tonight to talk about this issue. So as you've heard today, every person has a role to play. If you run an initiative for the girl or for the boy, it's your responsibility to make sure that you create a balance. The society has a role if you're a parent, if you're an uh, elder sibling and all that. Let us all make sure that we are uh, up front and we are on the forefront making sure that all these things are achieved for a greater nation. Thank you very much for joining us tonight on Y254 News Updates. My name is Patrick. Trisha Moriuki, to have yourselves a very good night.